Well, hello everyone. Uh, Tay Kim here from the Traders Club, and thank you for tuning in to our live, or not live actually, um, to our midweek update video. I do have planned to do a live session next Wednesday. I don't have any, you know, meetings or anything like that next Wednesday. So uh, I do have planned to do that next Wednesday. So if you haven't signed up, go to twotradersclub.com and uh, just look for the free webinar tab there and you can sign up there if you haven't. You sign up once, you sign up for a whole year 2015. I try to do it every other Wednesday, but when I'm busy, I do have to uh, postpone or cancel that event. So right now, I, there's, you know, it looks like my next Wednesday, I'm gonna be open. So right after market close next Wednesday, we'll do live event. And you know, something we haven't been, we haven't done a lot is, you know, uh, just just get some of your uh, questions. If you have any questions, we're gonna need stocks you want me to watch or you want me to look at. You know, uh, do any analysis or if you had any questions regarding uh, technical analysis. Uh, you know, any psychological aspect of trade, anything like that, I thought maybe we can take some time next Wednesday. I, I'll make sure I don't take too much time analyzing the market next Wednesday if I, when I do, if I, if I do, I mean, I'm planning on doing it, but sometimes things can get, things can come up. When I do live event, if I do it, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. So uh, hopefully, hope you guys can join me next Wednesday. Uh, as I, I, as I analyze, analyze the market live next Wednesday. But uh, recently though, um, in next last Wednesday, um, basically the analysis I've done last Wednesday, this was uh, 15th. It, basically my analysis of last Wednesday, nothing really has changed. We're still in the intermediate term higher low, okay? Please keep in mind Everyone has different interpretation on what intermediate term is, right? If you're asking a day trader, anytime short term trader, well, this is intermediate term, just three, four, five days. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm going by the chart, the daily chart. This is the intermediate term, obviously, primary term. We're talking this is primary term. This is a primary uptrend since. 2009 I, I keep I have to keep like saying this because so many people ask me like you know about it so anyway so intermediate term uptrend obviously we are still we something that we talked about since early March is that yes we had pretty significant pullback but that's what this market does we go up and we pull back and like I like I, I've been saying since like you know since 2013 that there's always somewhere somebody shouting that this market is gonna completely crash and and they have no evidence right they have no justifying matters or facts to cover that it's just only thing is that hey this market is so uh, extended, overvalued, overbought. And something that I've been telling people is that this market can stay overbought, can stay overvalued for very, very long time. So remove your emotions, remove your feelings, remove what you think it should do, remove your this humanistic logical senses what certain thing must happen right because that's what this mark that's not what this market does so i i think i think obviously we're in an uptrend and and and, and because we're in an uptrend for so long it's, it's we're working with prolonged uptrend on the s p 500 all on the nasdaq and the dow jones and the russell obviously though however the russell actually uh, consolidated in 2014 it actually moved sideways for whole 2014. we actually had major topping pattern on the russell that never played out which that makes it much more bullish today but anyway so you know, S&P 500, obviously something we've been talking about is this, what I call resuscitated rising channel 
support. What I mean by resuscitated, it has been compromised, right? The integrity of that support has been compromised and it came back and started respecting that level again, just right on that 100 SMA. Your 100 SMA hoovering in that vicinity, kind of guarding that level while this rising channel uptrend support resuscitated, right? It's guiding and guarding and protecting this level there. So um, as long as we stay above that level, we are in an uptrend and we must respect it, right? So let me zoom in and let's look at minor term. Let's look at micro term and see what we're working with here. And obviously, you know, we got to this resistance level. We threw a little bit of shooting star here and it doesn't even look like a, you know, island reversal, minor term, right? This was a little my island. We gapped up, we gapped down, huge bearish day with the island reversal. Many people thought this market possibly go back down to this level and it could have, it could have, we've done that before, right, right here. You know, we hit that resistance, came back down. We hit that, this was back in like January. Hit that resistance, came back down again and hit this resistance level several times. Actually, many, many times. This is not true. You know, people say the more times it hit the support, it is likely it's going to break. That is not true because if you look at this, how many times we hit this support level? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times in December all the way through the February, we hit this support nine times and we didn't break that support. Same thing is true. We came back down to this level, 204 level. One, two, three, four, five, two, three, and let's call this kind of pounding on it too. Four, five times. So nine times here, five times you're hitting that support and was not able to. Bears are not able to break that support. So it is not true. The more times it hits the support, it is likely to break. That is not true, at least in this case. I'll tell you what is true. If it's an uptrend, if we, if we are dealing with an uptrend, and if it hits the resistance many, many times, it has high probability that it will break higher, it will break that resistance. That is true. In my opinion, that is true. Like here, we, we came to this resistance how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. The more times it hits the resistance in an uptrend, it is likely to break that resistance and thrive higher, right? Um, right there same pretty similar example right there how many times one two three uh let's call that four five six seven you know we hit that resistance seven times while we're in an uptrend what is the def what is the definition of uptrend higher lows and higher highs are we in the vicinity of a higher vicinity of a higher high yes this is a vicinity of a higher high this is high, low, higher, low. This high is higher than this high. This low is higher than this low. It's very, very easy to see lows and highs, right? So what I'm saying is, if we're in an uptrend, the more times it hits that resistance, I'm not saying support, resistance, it is likely to break. Opposite is true. So logically, if it start coming down, if we're in a downtrend, if it, if it hits that, you know, if it hits that support, right? If it pounds on that support, I believe likely it will break the support. I mean, obviously anything goes in the market. Anything can happen. We're talking about probabilities here. So instead of, you know, I think a lot of times people, when I say stuff like this, what people do is they just memorize it. That's a rule. So next time it happens, it's gonna happen. No. That's why there's a confirmation tools that you need to acquire, you need to master, so that you don't just go long here or short there. You wanna see this thing breaking below it and retesting level and then creating a lower high for further downside. 
same thing is true to the upside. Just, just because I said, hey, more times it hit this the resistance in an uptrend, it is likely to break that resistance drive higher. So then you can't just go long here or here because you want to see a confirmation that we break above that, right? And if you can break above that and hold above that, and there's a good confirmation that you know we have break broken above this resistance and possibly and has a high probability that it's gonna continue higher. So currently in SP 500 here, we are at the resistance level. And if if tomorrow, there's a good chance we gap up tomorrow. If we gap up tomorrow, and if we can stay above you know this pivot of 210 to 11 ish for a few days or so and, and may, if, if we do gap up if you can hold that gap even if we have a gap and fade you know a lot of times you'll gap and fade but if we can still hold above 210 80 ish that resistance right here and hold above it for about a few days or so then i do believe it will make new all-time highs and we may see another month or two of bullish run but again, below 211 though, things might still be hectic, which means we might see some shenanigan gap down tomorrow, some just unknown reasons. And then, you know, we might retest this level or even this uptrend support. You know, this market never makes it easy. This market never makes it easy. So that's kind of what I'm saying. But you know, just the way it looks like, just you know, just from what I see here, it does look very bullish. Now that we're back above 1020, and we see the last three days that 10 EMA has been acting as support quite well. See that 10 EMA here, 10 EMA there, and 10 EMA there. And then with the green candle, we close right at the resistance. So all we need is just a little bit of a push. And then to a to able to hold above 21080 ish tomorrow and until Friday. Let's give until Friday. If you can close above that by Friday, oh my god, I think this market is ready for another huge bullish move. And I think uh, you know there's there's been a lot of talk about strengthening dollars and that's gonna help that's gonna you know that's gonna create uh, you know, losses in, in, in companies. And that's true. That's true. There are certain, you know, anxiousness and there's certain uncertainty and weakness in that because dollar, uh, strength in dollar. But we cannot look at that one piece of information and say that this market is going to roll over, right? When was the last time that we never had any problems in this market? When was the last time we never had? I mean, since 2000, you know, since 2000, really eight or nine, we had a lot of problems, right? And this market kept going higher, even since 2011. So what, you know, those fundamental, you know, those fundamental values, I mean, you know, they, 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 they help, uh, they can, help us to gauge the overall economy and what to expect but price action is the king you respect price action first before accommodating anything else so as long as the price action continue to cultivate and establish and institute higher lows and higher highs in the intermediate and primary term we're in an uptrend Today, as of now, now that we're above 10 EMA, and not only that, we have a cultivated, what is this? A minor term high low. Uh, something similar right here. We got to the resistance. We pull back. We got that little bit of higher low there, a little bit of bull flag here, and then we got up. So, I mean, this might be what is setting up here, that higher low before getting up. So, it's starting to look very, very good environment for the bulls again and i like the fact that this market takes its time i like the fact that we get up and we it takes its time to digest that it's gain. we don't roll over we don't go crazy what we do is we consolidate we get up we consolidate again and takes its time and i and, I, and that to me is very healthy move and i think uh i think this market i view this market continue to be bullish 
right? Let me go through NASDAQ as well. And NASDAQ, obviously, you know, we gotten above this recent resistance level. We held above it. That is a very, very constructive move uh, for the buyers. Not only that, we got to the old resistance, now has became new support. We we held and respected that 100 SMA area. We, we have cultivated minor term higher low right at that 50 MA. And we created that higher high that are in the minor term. That's what I call minor term right there. However, you know, we are still kind of bound by that. We did also clear this resistance level. You remember what happened last time when we cleared that resistance? This is what I'm saying. This is my theory. In an uptrend, the more times it hit that resistance, more like it'll break and thrive higher. But it's not true in the inter in the in, in the uptrend. It more times it pounds on the support, it'll likely break. No. It actually it makes a more solid support when it does that, at least in this market that we're dealing with today. So anyway, so last time we we gotten above this resistance here, 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 and here. Once we gotten above that, we had a pretty good run there. So today what we're seeing is once again uh, getting above that resistance level. We also have resistance here and there, but I think we are starting to find some momentum in the minor term. So that's a good look on the tech sector there. Uh, let's look at Dow Jones. Dow Jones has been a bit laggy index out of all. I don't really look at Dow Jones that much, but we need to get back above that level here. And once we can get to that, then I think Dow Jones will follow other indices. Russell has been the leader has been that champion and something that I talked about since late December that Russell 2000 is the index to watch is the index to watch Russell 2000 was a leader you know back in 2000 all the way 2013 right the indices did not move apart from Russell's command <laughs> I don't know if <laughs> command I'm just like taking a word terms here but you know apart from Russell first making the first move and I believe that Russell is gonna become that leader again this is kind of what I was talking about in 2014 we had that you know major major topping pen that was a kind of a scary look in the equities because we had this kind of double top head and shoulders pattern confirmed and then we nullified it which I talked about in my videos and my blog we had an inverse head and shoulder to nullify that topping, pa topping pattern. Once we got back above some of these levels, we have fully confirmed this inverse head and shoulders. Okay. And please don't come to me and tell me that that is not inverse head and shoulder because of certain factors that you're you're looking at. Okay. Please. Okay. I don't. Right now, I don't have time to explain why why that is and let's let's just let's just stick with it you know what let me just okay here why because <laughs> i get these stupid questions all the time i'm sorry if you're that person <laughs> but i get these stupid questions this well i don't agree that that's an inverse head and shoulder what i'm saying inverse head and shoulder is inverse head and shoulder all it is guys is that it is no longer cultivating lower highs and lower lows and now it is cultivating higher lows with equal lows, equal highs, and then creating higher, high, higher. That's what infrared head and shoulder is. It is no longer in a downtrend, lower lows and lower highs, but instead it came down and then it has formed higher low for the first time. And what it needs is a higher high to confirm it. That's what infrared head and shoulder is. There's a different notions about, if you're, you know, the thing about trading, guys, is that you cannot make these stupid rules, these textbook patterns where it has to be exactly what the, you know, the right shoulder has to be perfect, you know, the, you know volume, it has to be perfectly, you know, Fibonacci, 50% level, it has to be leaning just a perfect angle. It just, it's stupid. If you look at it that way, if you look at the market that way, that's what many technical traders do not understand. This market don't care about your patterns. This market don't care about your stupid rules and stupid textbook patterns. What we have to understand is the sentiment that it carries, that that, that pattern carries. It's not that pattern that is important. What sentiment does it carry? What does it tell us? And so, you know, 
and I have been there though. That's the that's the thing about it is I master about everything about everything to do with technicals i master everything i started trading 2007 for the next first like you know three years i just devoted my time i did nothing except mastering technicals you asked me about any candlestick patterns any volume anything that has ever been written by a man i mass i perfected and i'm i'm gonna tell you right now those perfection in those rules and those textbooks did not make me money. I kept losing money. Why? Because trading is not like some mechanical thing. Trading is not some engineering, you know, thing where there's certain it's not math. You know, one plus two is three. In math, in trading, one plus two may be it has high probability of being three, but there's a good chance it can be minus three. Do you agree with me on that? There's a good chance it can also be five or minus two, but there's a high probability that it could be three. That's trading. One plus two is not equal to three in trading. So I try to um, help those you know, technical traders still struggling because I've been there. And what I had to realize here, here's a, here's, a, here's a key thing. What I had to realize is that it's not about fixated rules that is going to help for you to gain control in this market and also be lucrative in trading. Um, you know, like I said, understanding or memorizing certain rules, certain patterns, it's not gonna get you far. It's not going to get you far. But understanding the sentiment and understanding the environment with technical tools, that's gonna help. And so, I mean, obviously your, your foundation has to be strong. And so, you know, do your diligence to study these technical formulas and technical uh, patterns, candles, moving averages and volume. But also, you have to under, understand that just memorizing all of that is not going to help you as far as... I mean, it, it, you know, if you, it will help you furthering your skills, but all that alone is not going to make you money. Kind of like this, if you went to MBA, if you went to you know school, business school, you've learned everything about business. How many people who had graduated from prestigious college with the business degree, MBA degree, and can aim to run a successful business and continue in it. How many? Not many. Trading is kind of like that. Trading is kind of like that. Technical is very, very easy to pick up, but it's very difficult to master. And when I say master, I'm not talking about just understanding textbook stuff. Understanding, what I'm saying is be able to profit year in and year out so anyway so going back to russell here obviously russell has been awesome because you know we got came out of this this huge consolidation also looked like it was going to break down this you could call it massive bear trap and when these kind of traps happen actually it actually it it's more bullish you know what I mean? It's actually more bullish when you because it looked like it was gonna break down and then it reversed. And when it reversed, it made all the bears kind of like shocked. They're like paralyzed. They don't know what to do. They're like, what the heck's going on right now? And then that's the that's the time where that's gonna take it, buyers gonna take advantage of this situation and bring it out. And that's exactly I mean we had a certain you know, uncertainty and fear and anxiety right about here at that resistance level. But what I said, the more times it hits that resistance in an uptrend, that it is likely to break that resistance drive higher. That is true in an uptrend. Are we in an uptrend? Are we in a primary term uptrend on the Russell? Yes, we're still in an uptrend. So you can see we came here, 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 here. Even this resistance here, we break above that we broke above it. So, I mean, 2013, you know, we had a, that was a cautionary signal, though, where, where the Russell was weak. But now, Russell is looking very healthy. 
you know, as long as we stay above, you know, 120, you know, 120, 119 ish. I think worst case, even if you come down all the way down here and kind of hit that 100 SMA, I do think there's a good chance this level we're gonna find a lot of buyers. Okay, this is a pivot, very strong pivot. But what I can't say is, are we gonna come down and then go back up? Are we just gonna keep grinding higher? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. But what we what it what we're gonna do? We're gonna continue to respect the uptrend. We have an intermediate and minor term uptrend. You can see they got minor term higher lows and higher highs. We got kind of a this kind of an intermediate term higher highs going here as well. So R Russell looks strong. And Russell is uh, holding well above 1020 MA, so it looks looks good there. So I mean, looking at all these indices, I mean, I have to say that you know we it's starting to look more and more bullish. Obviously, you know this market has been bullish in the intermediate term and primary term, which I've been preaching about, right? And and with the recent move, it's starting to look bullish. And it, right now, as of today, it is bullish in the minor term with a little bit of a hesitation. I mean, not hesitation, little a little bit of as, as long as we're below this resistance. We don't know what is gonna happen tomorrow. I mean, this thing can just, you know, gap down tomorrow. It could just, you know, we don't know. But as far as the probabilities, remember what I said about one plus two thing? Right now, it looks like one plus two is equal to three. That looks very high probability. What I'm saying is right now, it looks like this thing is ready to bust out. But this is a market. One plus two can be minus three. So keep that in mind, but as far as the probability is concerned, with the to today's move, it does look very bullish to me. So let's look at Tesla and Apple. We'll close the video. Um, you know, Tesla is actually starting to look pretty good here. Um, what I like about it is, um, you know, we have some weekly chart. Um, you know, this is a weekly chart here. We have some weekly chart. You know, uh, oscillators starting to show some positive signals. Again, that's not a buy signal, guys. It's uh, please don't look at it like that. But that could become a buy signal, and 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 we have cultivated higher low in the minor term, which is also a good sign. So, you know what I'm looking at right now is I still don't want to be involved with this a below, a below 226 or so. Okay, I want to make sure it takes out that 200 SMA as well and the resistance here. So. Um, if we can get back above that and hold above that, I think there's a good chance that this might be that bottom. This looks like some some good consolidation here. You know, looking at a pri primary primary term, primary primary since this here, I mean we are still in a primary term uptrend. You know, because we got the low here with the high here, we got the high here, we got the high here. You know what I mean? So I mean we got to this low here, but we're technically still in primary term uptrend it just it, you know recent downtrend right here i look at that as more like a intermediate term to primary downtrend um but with the recent consolidation this could possibly be you know the bottoming pattern, but we don't know as of today. And something we talked about, I think, you know, a month ago or so, we talked about this bullish divergence. That's also a good sign. And we also talked about that we need some, we need this divergence. Need, that divergence needed to be substantiated with the by the price action. What I mean was that I needed to see this first before just guessing that that's what's going to happen, right? So we saw that. So it has been substantiated by the or substantiating by the price action. But that 200 SMA right here had that did act as resistance before, so that's an important level. So this is a level which is coinciding with this resistance again. I'm still can't say Tesla is bullish until we get above 226 level. But starting to look like maybe something is happening here. But I still think it needs time. I still don't want to be involved before earnings. I'll wait until earnings. And then and then go from there. Good thing about the Tesla where it bounced. When I did all time Fibonacci retracement analysis, you can see that we bounced right on the 38.2%. I know don't worry about the number. I did it so I can get these uh, expansions up here. But 38.2%. So we retraced 38.2% from the all time low to all time high. And a lot of times that's a good level 
you know, either 50% or 38.2% is a good level. I know Apple, September 2012, crashed to about 50% and then it got back up. Tesla, maybe we're holding this 38.2%, but if we lose that 200 SMA there, we might even come down to 50 uh, percent retracement, but we don't know it as of today. So, um, you know, right now I would watch, but I don't want to be engaged with this. Obviously, because I don't do anything short term. Short term. <laughs> so just just let you guys know. Uh, lastly, we look at Apple, and uh, Apple. You know, looking at this, we do have earnings coming up here shortly, twenty four. So Friday after close. So um, I, you know, obviously, you know, I'm I, I hold, I'm holding very marginal position now. Uh, you know that I enter here and here. I close most of it up here. I'm only holding very marginal now, but I closed most of it up here, so I, I, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to get long. I want to make sure I want to wait until after ER. But this is a resistance level, and that's kind of what I'm talking about. Within an uptrend, the more times hit that resistance, is likely to break that resistance and thrive higher. But with the earnings coming up shortly, I'm not sure how it's going to play out here. If the market breaks out tomorrow, there's a good chance Apple also breaks out with it. So, but again, with the earnings there, I really don't want to commit to it right now until after the effect. But looks bullish here, right on that 50 MA, continue to act as support. That's a good sign as well. Um, that's it for me. Um, actually, um, you know, Starbucks, Boston Scientific has been good for us. We closed most of our positions uh, last week. So, we're only marginal there, but Toyota Motor, uh, we're still holding hefty positions on it. We actually entered here and then closed about 50%, uh, you know, late March. And then, you know, uh, we, it came down and then you can see it, it kind of with the gap up today, last yesterday, actually, uh, it's starting to look like this might be a higher low that you continue to, you know, uh, cultivate higher lows and higher. This is a very, very well disciplined uptrend. You can see how it is well established and continue to cultivate that higher low higher high and the thing about it is nobody knows how long it's going to do that it could continue to do that for a while and looking at you know oscillators on a monthly chart weekly chart they all look like still can go higher Mo daily chart also i mean after this move here so that you know the daily oscillators are resetted and so they they can also go higher as well so i'm not sure where the earnings is but uh we'll continue to hold uh half of our positions there we continue to ride that and and we'll go from there. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave me any comments on blog post there. Um, so, all right, well, hopefully uh, this video can be a, a help for you in your journey in trading. Um, you know, again, uh, take your time. This isn't something that it's gonna happen overnight. That's the misconception is that somehow you're born genius and you know you're gonna take this and you're gonna get it, you know, overnight. That's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. So take your time and, and learn this business. Um, if this is your you know truly passion, you know, then then I'm sure you'll figure it out one day. Um, you know, uh, so you know, but I think one thing about it is patience um, and dichotomy of trading is that not only you have to have a patience you also have to know when to be aggressive right patience aggressiveness they're completely two different things but you got to know how to mix it when to be patient when to be aggressive and that's very very difficult for many people because you know what i mean you got to know when to do what and so and i i told i really truly think trading is 70% psychological and 30% skills. What I'm saying is that you master everything about how to trade. And I tweeted about this on Twitter, you know, uh, uh, we, last week. That everything about you, if you knew everything about how to trade, the skills, everything, it only consists of 30%. What I'm saying, the reason I say this is because when you're when you are in, in when you're bombarded with a heated moment, if you don't, you do, if you do not know how to control your mind, control your feelings, emotions, you don't have that fortitude, then everything you ever learn goes out the window because now you're either angry, you know, irritated, and, and, and you just, you're just now playing with the emotion, like anger. And, and when that happens in the market, it, everything you've ever learned is going out the window. That's why I believe 70% trading is psychological. And I think, you know, um, I mean, obviously, you guys know that I position trade. I want to hold things six months a year and take require tremendous um, patience 
but also requires you know skills to know when to be aggressive uh, getting into positions um, and also skill to you know uh, trust in your analysis and and, and, and and you know understand the market is gonna have a you know just straight up move it's gonna have its up and downs we all know this and it's so interesting that so many people just want this market to either go straight up or straight down right so um, that's what I got for you guys and hopefully uh, you know can be helpful for you um, so next Wednesday uh, I will uh, try to put out live event again I'm not sure uh, I mean I I'm planning on it but I'll if, if I if I had to cancel I'll, I'll let you know at a time but also Friday uh, May 1st Friday uh, one hour before market close also have another uh, live webinar um, you know introduction on, on, on our memberships and our market research uh, product so if you're interested in that um, you can sign up to ask me any questions regarding our memberships um, you know trading services so that's on May 1st and next Wednesday which is the 29th I uh, will we'll go ahead and if I you know there's if not if I don't have any important meeting to attend to then we'll go ahead and do um, you know a live event and we'll follow up on these on the on the indices Tesla Apple and you know maybe we'll talk about some of our position that I'm currently holding see how they are doing and and see if the market will have a you know another bullish run next month or two so have a night we'll talk uh, hopefully next week